day, good day, everybody. Morning has already come and gone. Well, actually, no, it's not even noon yet. I got up really early. Feels like it's afternoon already. So this morning, oh, we went into Minneapolis. I had two pickups. One well into the city and one in Maple Grove, which is sort of on the northwest side. Same place, just two different locations. Highly inconvenient, but we got it done. The second part, I had to tarp, so that was fun. But uh, we're on our way up to Red Lake, Ontario. I'm taking Highway 65 up to Highway 2, or US 2, I'm gonna take that up uh, west to Highway 6, and then take Highway 6 up to 71, and 71 will take me through International Falls, and then I'll be on familiar roads there. Uh, sort of cutting through northern Minnesota, through the back country here. Uh, I like this better going through the back country. It's quieter, less traffic, and I know the roads because I come through here often. So I know where all the good truck stops are with all the best treats, unfortunately. <laughs> We're going to watch what we eat, right? Right. I'm at a quick trip right now in, uh, what the, I've never been to this place before though. I'm on US 65. I am in Isanti, Minnesota. I S, where is it? I S A N T I, Isanti. We run in here, uh, grab a coffee, and then we'll head on down the road. We're going to be in Red Lake, Ontario tonight. Get unloaded tomorrow morning. Go back down to Kenora, which is south of Red Lake. Grab another one of those loads for Brainerd and zip back down here into Minnesota. So it's been a good week. Uh, I've been rush, rush, rush. That's why I didn't film anything this morning. I wanted to make sure I got everything loaded. And out of that, I wanted to be first in the gate and first out. And we were. And good thing I didn't take any uh, breaks or get any delays because there was a lot of trucks lined up behind me right away. So I would have had, I would have still been there. So good thing I was on the ball. I want to stay on the ball. I don't want to lose the ball. Let's keep the ball. And let's keep rolling. This week's been going good so far. So, all the way at the back here, they had one skid that needed to be tarped. Just one. So I tarped three. <laughs> Just worked out better that way. My tarp was too big to tarp, just one. So two extra skids got a tarp for free. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good. Plans might be changing uh, for my next load. I'm not too sure yet. I just got a call from them saying that they might be uh, sending me out to stretch my legs out a little bit, a little bit further again. So they might take me off this next load that I was going to pick up in Kenora tomorrow, put someone else on it, and then put me on something else. Or I might be able to do both. I might be able to get this Kenora load done and then run back and get this other load, which is going a little bit further than I usually go again. I had a lot of fun going down to Texas last time, so I just put the bird, put the bird out there. I don't know what the saying is. I put the, the whisper in their ear saying, hey, I kind of like doing that every now and then. If you need somebody, if you need somebody to cover something. And I came up with something. But I'll wait to uh, tell you what it is until I know whether or not I'm going. <laughs> it's not Texas this time. Grand Rapids, Minnesota. I always want to say Grand Rapids, Michigan. Grand Rapids, Minnesota. At 600 meters, turn right on. Third Avenue and then 38. How about new? I know a better way. This is my regular route for, uh, between Brainerd and uh, Brainerd and Kenora. I'm going to take that same route up north. But first, we're going to stop in here. There's a Casey's just up the street here. It is the cheapest juice on my route. I don't really need fuel. I don't really need fuel because I fueled up yesterday in St. Cloud, but I am going to top off my tanks because I'm going up into Ontario and then I'm going home from there. Oh, I'm gonna need the fuel. The new plan has been confirmed. Looking forward to it. Continue on this road for 23 kilometers. There you go, now you care, now you know where we're going. Now 
now she figured it out. We're going up to Minnesota Highway 6 and taking that north. Where is this Casey's? I thought it was here somewhere. Ah, the Casey's is actually not in Grand Rapids. It's in, what is this town called? Cohasson? Cohasson? Just west of where we were? Here it is on the right. 500 meters, turn right onto First Avenue Northwest. First Avenue, number one. Nice. I've never fueled up here before, so I don't, uh, I don't know where they're, okay, so their diesel pumps are on that end over there, I see. Okay, this is interesting. Take the next right onto First Avenue Northwest, then turn right. How do we get in there? Oh boy. Oh wow, okay. This is tight. I probably should have gone in. Oh wow, how am I supposed to get in here? Take the next right, then turn, turn right. right. Again. Turn right in 110 meters. Take the next right, then turn left. Wow, okay. Did I come in backwards? I thought this was the way to come in. I, I guess not. Yikes. I'm gonna have to figure something out. Go around the block or something. Take the next left, then your destination will be on the left. Oh no, we're, we're here. I'm just trying to figure out where we, like, how to... What? Okay, so I'm gonna have to go around and try again. Continue on this road for eight kilometers. Because I need to come in right here where I'm going out. I thought this was would have been the exit. So I'm gonna go all the way around. There's a road that leads around the back of the gas station. First, I've gotta turn right onto this highway here. And there's a lot of traffic. Both directions. Okay. Come with me, everybody. We're going on an adventure. Continue on this road for 16 kilometers. Back down this road. But instead of going into their lot, we're gonna go onto this road behind it here. See this? All right, you see what we're doing here? We go all the way around. So we are just winners today. We're gonna turn right at the stop sign and then come in the driveway the correct way and go into the pumps that way interesting uh, setup they got here. Like I said, it's my first time here. This is usually what happens when I go somewhere new for the first time. Next time I'll know better.
was embarrassing. Cohasset, Minnesota. Cohasset. That's the city hall over there. That's how I know that. Look at this. Look how dirty blue is. Look at this tank. It almost looks like it's painted. <laughs> Yikes. We have to give this thing a bath for our next trip. Why is this tire looking low here right now? Okay. Must just be the way we're sitting. The tire pressures were fine before I checked them just before. Sometimes the way we sit on uh, on concrete uh, puts more pressure on one set of tires than the other side because we're leaning a little bit. All right, okay, so we have different plans in the works. We're not going to Kenora tomorrow. Instead, we're going home. I'm going to need a reset for my next trip. We're going to stretch our legs a little bit. It's been confirmed. So uh, I'm not going to tell you where yet. I'm going to leave you in suspense. But uh, I'll be leaving in a couple of days. So tomorrow we'll deliver this load to Red Lake, Ontario, and then I just go home empty. Like I said, get my reset. Once my logbook is reset, I'll have all the hours available to me. And then we'll head out there. All right. There's 49 gallons, 183 liters, just topped it up. Now I won't have to worry about fueling until I'm on my way on my next trip.
I did have the right of way there, didn't I? But that's okay. I would have just slowed him down. He won't slow me down. All right, I do have to pay the toll here today. It wasn't worth it for me to go through Rainy River. I was too far around. Wouldn't have paid off. In 800 meters, turn left on Boag Avenue. So I'll give the toll man my money to get across the bridge into Canada so I can go home. And I've still got like five hours of driving left yet. Woo! Red Lake is pretty far up there. there freaked the daylights out of me <laughs> I was just getting into spot getting into my spot over here right sort of straightening myself out you know sort of just in my own little world just doo -doo -doo -doo, you know just trying to park all nice and straight and so that I can get out of here and hopefully you know park in a way where no one can block me in overnight and finally find the right spot settle in pull the brakes I look over there, and there's a deer, like right beside my truck, just staring straight at me, like right in the eye. It's through my window, just 
doesn't move. I knew he was alive because you could see his ears twitching, right? My brakes, like pulling my brakes, the big psh, didn't phase it. Didn't phase it. I wonder where it went. <laughs> Creepy demon deer. Oh well. I'm gonna stay in the truck where it's safe. <laughs> What's a deer gonna do? It wasn't a buck, it was a dope. Uh, better be careful, he's gonna end up in someone's freezer. He keeps acting like that around humans, you know? That's the problem, people feed them. And then they become used to humans and trusting of humans. And then they meet the human with the freezer. And then they end up in the freezer. That's why you don't feed wildlife. If you really care about wildlife, you really care about them, and you want them to live a long, happy life and not get hunted, don't feed them. Don't do that. If you do that, you know what you're training them to do? The next time an actual hunter finds them, they're gonna walk right up to him. Just stare at them. Just like this. Go up me snacks? Nope. But I got a freezer! And it's dinner time. I haven't had deer, you know, I think I've had deer once. I'm not a big hunter myself. I'd, I'd like to do more hunting. Or some hunting at all. I've never had anyone to take me, so I need someone who uh, knows what they're doing to kind of show me the ropes, because uh, I I don't know, I uh, haven't gone before. Kind of embarrassing to admit that, I know, but I've never gone hunting, so uh, one day I'll go on a hunt, it'll be fun. Anyways, I'm going to go to bed right here in Dryden, this is far enough for today, uh, I've got seven and a half hours of driving tomorrow if the weather's good. I should be able to make it home no problem. I'll have 13 hours available to me to get that done in. So, I think we'll make it. it should be just fine. We're gonna get up really early though. Like, my alarm's gonna go off probably at 4.30. So I get up, do my pre-trip, make sure the truck's ready to go, warm up the engine, and get going, I think. Cause I only have to stop here for eight hours legally. I'm here in Canada, so. We stopped here at 8.15, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 15, I can start my pre-trip. If that takes about 15 minutes, I can get rolling at about 4.30 a.m. We're in central time, not that it matters for the sake of this vlog, but whatever. 4.30, now we got about two and a half hours of driving to get to the customer. 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, we get there at 7 a.m. They open their doors at 7 a.m. Might be there a little bit early. That'll give us time to stop for a coffee on the other side of town at Husky. So that's the plan. Hopefully we can get out of there by 8, 8.30 in the morning. And then I've got another uh, five hour drive home. So let's say 8.30, say we get out of there at nine, worst case scenario. Nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two. Be at my shop at about 2 p.m. Get old blue parked in there. Wind down a little bit. By the time I get home, I'll be home in time for supper. I like that plan. What do you think? You like that plan? Now let's actually see if the plan works out. Remember, this is trucking. You got a plan for the plan not to work. But you still got a plan. Seems kind of pointless making a plan then, right? But, but what else can we call it? This is what we would like to see happen. Home by 2 o'clock at the shop, sorry, at the shop, around two o'clock, home for supper, so home by 6 p.m., like 5.30, be nice to be home by like 4.30, 5 o'clock, so that I can shower and be clean and ready around 6 p.m. the home, that's, that's what we're gonna do, we'll see what happens. Tune in tomorrow, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We make videos every day, we've been making videos every day for a long time, we're in our 13th year right now, we're in season 11, I haven't been counting since the beginning, there's a couple of years before I started numbering the vlogs like this, but uh, we're in season 11 right now, I believe, or is it season 10? Lots of videos for you to catch up on. Go to my channel, hit the playlists. You can see all of my playlists, they're all organized by year, right back to the beginning where I started counting, and beyond that yet, uh, makes it real easy for you to find what you're looking for and what year you're looking for, back when I had a big bushy beard, back when I had some hair, back when I was a young, annoying young adult, back before I met my wife, then when I met my wife, and then after, then when I married my wife, and ever since then, it's all on YouTube.
So there's a lot for you to catch up on. Also, if you really like my videos and you made it all the way to the end of my video, thank you, hit the thumbs up button for me. That really helps me out. And if you really, really, really like my videos and you really wanna help out the channel, you can always go down below the video and click that join button as well. You can get a basic membership or a premium membership, like the cost of a cup of coffee a month and you get early access to the videos then if you really really like them and you want to see them a bit early as soon as I get them on the internet usually like a couple of days early maybe uh, up to a week early sometimes and there's also members only videos and content that are coming as well that's that'll just be released to the members and if you want to go check that out subscribe hit the like button all the things I'll see you tomorrow I gotta be up early I changed my mind <laughs> I was looking around there where I was parked and I thought to myself, there's absolutely no 24 hour building anywhere near me. It would be a long cold walk if my truck wouldn't start. And I was cold and I couldn't get any heat. There was nowhere I can go in. So I'm gonna go up to the Husky or the Esso, just around the corner, see if I can find a spot there. At least they have a 24 hour truck stop. And if the worst does happen, or if there's any emergency, or whatever, I can go inside their warm building. It's winter time, so I don't like to take unnecessary risks. That spot where I was at would have been nice and quiet. But, nah, it's winter time. It's not even that cold, but still. I don't want to risk it. If I have another instance where I wake up and my batteries are dead, I don't think that's gonna happen, but if I do, there's not even anybody around there except that other guy to boost me, and he's probably gonna be gone by the time I get up. At the truck stop, at least maybe I can find someone, because I got my booster cables with me now, right? Maybe I can at least find someone then that'll give me a hand and give me a boost, but I'm not expecting my batteries to be dead. But if I gotta wait a long time, for whatever reason, yeah, you get it. It's just better, it's smarter. That ESO kinda worries me a little bit because it's kinda crowded. I don't wanna get blocked in in the morning because I'm leaving early in the morning. I could go park at the Petro Pass, but again, that's not a 24 hour stop. But at least it's in town, right? I could walk somewhere warm from there. Wouldn't be such a long walk. We'll figure it out. We'll go check out Esso first. Should 
be a safe spot. Is this a spot? I think it is.